Wow, thank you guys so much. Um, I noticed that there was an ASL interpreter here, so I just wanted to start by saying hi and happy pride. And um, also, in addition to any of deaf or hard of hearing people that are here, I am so honored and excited that Savannah is here. I saw that, this morning, that, I saw that story this morning and it choked me up and I just think she's amazing and has so much courage at such a young age and to stand up and speak her truth in front of her congregation like that is honestly just amazing and so beyond me, my story was a lot different. <laughs> so much of my life has been spent in fear that someone would find out that I was gay, that I am gay. It's a fear that used to keep me up at night, a truth I've known about myself since a young age so young, in fact, that I didn't have words to associate with the feelings that I was having. I remember visiting a hot springs with my family when I was about seven years old. There was a lifeguard on duty there who was like nothing I had ever seen. <laughs> One of my action figures come to life. He was muscular and tan and he oozed confidence in his red swim trunks. I noticed. And instinctively, I knew that my noticing was something I couldn't tell anyone. I knew that it made me different. And so it was my secret. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> and that secret was the beginning of my life in the closet. In that moment, and countless other moments throughout my young life, I wished that I could be invisible. I wished that I could just disappear entirely. Fast forward almost 20 odd years from that first realization in the pool, and here I am, accepting an award for my visibility as an out and proud gay man. And isn't that ironic? How much of my life, how many agonizing years I spent worried about what my life would be like if I let people know the real me, and how much better my life has actually become since I did let them know. When I made that decision to come out, I had prepared myself for the absolute worst case scenario. I couldn't bear to think about spending another day, another year, another season lying by omission, worrying about slipping up in a conversation or an interview and accidentally outing myself too afraid to show affection to my boyfriend at the time in case anyone would see. It was torture. When I think about the closet, I basically picture the Chokey in Matilda, a dark claustrophobic chamber with nails sticking out of it. The only thing scarier than being trapped in the closet is coming out. And as I've said so many times before, for me it had simply gotten to a point where the pain of holding on to the lie had become greater than the fear of letting go. <sighs> and so, I opened that choky door, not knowing what would be waiting for me on the other side. When I announced to the world that I am gay on the cover of ESPN, I had already told a few of my closest friends and my family. They had all been nothing but loving and supportive. And I told, even myself that, and I told myself that even if no one else in the world accepted me, if sponsors dropped me, competition stopped inviting me, my fan base disappeared, or competitors stopped talking to me, that I would still have everything I need, a tight inner circle that loves me unconditionally. And that was my mindset. Looking back, it almost makes me laugh. I thought I was gonna lose everything, and what I never expected was everything that I was about to gain. I took a leap, into, leap of faith into the deep end of the pool, and you, the LGBTQ community, you guys were that hot-ass lifeguard in the red swimsuit. <laughs> you didn't let me drown. <laughs> Aside from my selfish reasons for coming out, wanting to be free, wanting to be able to go to gay bars, wanting to be able to have a boyfriend that I could kiss in public or whose hand I could hold. I also wanted to help kids who might be in the same position that I had been in. Growing up in a town of 2,000 kids, 2,000 residents and a class of 48 kids and then turning pro as an athlete in an adrenaline-filled, hyper-masculine sport when I was only 16, coming out just didn't seem like an option. There was no gay role model or anyone I knew personally and nobody in the public eye who resonated with me. In the build-up to my coming out, I can attribute a lot of the courage I harnessed to other athletes who had come out in their own respective sports. Michael Sam, Tom Daly, Jason Collins, Robbie Rogers, but still, yeah. But still, action sports was a totally different world. I would hear snowboarders refer to skiers as skier fags. Everybody in the industry said anything that was bad or disappointing was gay, and there was an almost unspoken rule that you had to say no homo before saying anything sensitive, complimentary, or kind. 
in a sport that's all about being counterculture to mainstream sports, was me being gay too counterculture to be okay? I wasn't sure. But in free skiing, how you're scored at events is based largely around progression. And when it comes to progression, I did know one thing. When pushing the envelope and trying a new trick, one that's never been done before, it's always harder and a lot scarier to be the first guy to do it. You don't know if it'll work out, how it will look, or how people will react to it. But once it's been done, it suddenly becomes that much more attainable for anybody else to learn that trick too. So, I'd like to thank everybody who came out before me. Men and women from all different walks of life, facing different fears and hardships, who stepped up in much more condemning points in history. Although your situation and my situation are different, you all groomed a path and made it possible for me to come out. And now, hopefully, I've continued to make footsteps in the snow for a younger generation to follow in. Thank you to the... Oh. Thank you to the HRC so much for this award. It's an incredible honor. And for all the hard work that you do for the LGBTQ community, you touch lives, change lives, and save lives. And I can't thank you enough for it. I hope you all have a great night.